Hi, I'm Ed Jacobs, founder of Impact Therapy. I'm here talking with Wilson Harvey, who studied with us at West Virginia University. Today, we're going to be talking about impact therapy and school counseling. First, Wilson, why don't you take a minute to introduce who you are? And yeah, no, absolutely. So, um, again, my name is Wilson Harvey. And I actually work as a social emotional learning specialist at Buchanan Upshur High School uh, in Buchanan, West Virginia. And so what that really means is I work a lot on the mental health side of school counseling uh, at the high school level where there can be a lot of other things that get to come in. I get to do a lot more of that brief counseling um, work. And uh, I've been in the field uh, for three, I think this might be year four, honestly. With COVID, it's kind of hard to keep yes. track. <laughs> um, and it's been uh, it's been a good ride. We graduated from WVU's master's program uh, in 2019, and uh, and yeah. So. And you were a school counselor in Virginia, mm -hmm. and then now are in West Virginia. That's right. Why do you feel impact therapy is useful for school counselors? Yeah, well, I think when we look at the school setting, one of the things that's so critical is that things are kind of quick, right? There's time constraints on school counselors. So that's one of the first things I look at. Like you're, you got Tommy who needs to go back to math class. And so if you're trying to make an impact, you want to do it quickly. But there's also the key that kids learn through, like anybody else, through multi-sensory means. You know, if you work in education, you know, if you just deliver lecture-based content in a classroom all the time, you're not going to reach most kids, some maybe a small group of kids. Um, but with when I'm doing counseling, when I'm doing, you know, some of that therapeutic type of work, I've got to be able to pull in all different kinds of modalities that try to engage kids' senses. And that's what really helps things stick. And I, I've seen that really come to play, just like a, a creative lesson is going to stick more with a kid. Well, I just realized why don't you tell, in your mind, what do you think, what is impact therapy and why is it a little different than, mm -hmm. say, other approaches you've seen your colleagues do? Or... Yeah, well, I think, you know, when you look at general counseling as a whole, especially when you think about mental health counseling, there's that popular idea of talk, listen therapy. And, and I, I believe, and I've seen this in my experience in the field, that there is a place for that, right? But what, diff, what makes impact therapy different, and I think a lot of school counselors throw away the idea of doing anything therapeutic because they think, oh my gosh, it's going to entail this long, drawn-out Freudian process of years and years of work. Impact therapy is designed to work quickly because you're drawing in on those multiple senses and modalities in that multi-sensory mode, which is the critical component of impact. So... This is what allows a school counselor to really focus on mental health. Um, and it's really critical because I've also found not every kid is going to be able to solve more or less their own problems through talk, listen, therapy. Sometimes they're going to need more concrete examples. So it, it's a really powerful tool. Just so the person watching this, what are some of the things that you use that you would say are impact therapy or your favorite techniques? Mm -hmm. Well, a couple things that um, are really, really prominent in my work, first of all, is a whiteboard, just like this. Uh, being able to write things out. Um, and, and when you use creative techniques, impact therapy has a, a base in theories like REVT, CBT. Um, transactional analysis is a big one I'll mention here. Um, you know, add Leary in and, and reality therapy, but I do a lot, like if you're familiar with CBT, of disputes on the whiteboard, right? And so you'll do like true and not true grids. Um, if you read the book, Impact Therapy, The Courage to Counsel, you'll see more about those uh, and certainly in other demonstration videos here. Um, so whiteboard's powerful because it draws the client's eyes up and it also helps them then to visualize some of the work that they're doing rather than just talking it out. Uh, another big one for me, I love, love, love the use of chairs when it comes especially to psychodramas. Um, there's a theory, transactional analysis, uh, 
if you haven't heard it and you're watching this video, I definitely encourage you to go um, look into it. Uh, similar to parts work, and you hear about internal family systems, but um, as an earlier theory with this idea of ego states, um, I'll have students sort of act out the different ego states that they're in, the different parts more or less that they play. Um, if, and, and we really work on trying to strengthen one part. So I might have them switch seats and we go back and forth. I've got a small chair sometimes. I have them go back from the small chair into this bigger, stronger seat. You know, they're trying to build and strengthen what we call their adult rational thinking part. And just doing that, that movement, I've seen have tremendously more impact than if I'm just sitting here working with a kid and trying to help them through talk, listen, develop rationality. Yeah, I think the, the, the chair is not the gestalt therapy mm -hmm. kind of empty chair, but yeah. just them seeing they have choices, mm -hmm. things like that. Right? Well, they're literally seeing themselves move from one place to another. And I think sometimes that projection, when you sit down in that chair, if I say this is the adult chair, you're now projecting, you know, okay, this chair, I've got to think a little differently because I'm assuming this role. And for some students, they've not seen, okay, they've not thought through rationally. Like they've not used that part of their brain. So they're, by virtue of that, just starting to do something that otherwise they might say, I don't know if I can do this. They might not have the motivation or the self-belief to be able to get started. One last question. You've presented lately at the ASCA conference mm -hmm. and you did a podcast, I think, mm -hmm. that was going to be nationally distributed. What were your highlights? Why, why do you think impact therapy is so good for school people? Mm -hmm. I mean, what did you present at those, at the conference? Yeah, well, we were we were really fortunate to get to present. Um, I worked with um, Richard Tinch, who's the chair of the ASCA Board of Directors, um, and um, who, who learned a lot in his grad program about um, impact therapy as well. And it was really just a privilege. Uh, and I was really pleased to see the response to, I think people want these concrete tools. Because what this does, I mean, impact therapy can work for any age group. But when you're thinking about kids, you know, it's very hard, you think elementary, middle, even high school, to conceptualize the idea of, okay, we're going to do this long, dark listen therapy, right? But if I have these tools to make things creative, I can infuse my own style. It can be a really, really, uh, I think it helps make the idea of doing mental health work in schools more palatable. To a school counselor. Yeah, as you're talking, I'm going to jump over here real quick. Mm -hmm. And just just little things like this, using a plate. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure you've done that. Oh, absolutely. Coke bottle would just sort of explain to him real quick. But... Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. So things like the Coke bottle, I have it sitting actually on a table in my, uh, in my office at all times. And so... Sometimes I talk to a student about a couple of things. It can be anger, which is where you get the idea you get shaken up, is how I learned um, the Coke bottle. But sometimes I use it too to talk to students about what happens when they bottle things up. Like if they don't yeah. share their emotions, you know, you end up, you can get shaken up and eventually you explode. Um, one of my favorite things to do as a counselor is to ask the student to open the bottle after they've shaken it. Because they, just without fail, they look, like you're just nuts. Um, but they start to understand that's what happens when they keep that bottled up. That's why there's value in talking to somebody. Where the plate, so many students have their plate too full. Some of it with things they can't control, but trying to help them learn, okay, how can I, you know, if I'm carrying this plate that's way too full and I'm struggling to keep everything on it, I might have to drop something. Okay, so what is it that I need to drop? off the plate it's just visualizations like that like a student may think that they are supposed to do and hold everything that they've got in their life but they don't have enough room in their life to do it so something's naturally going to fall off when they visualize hey i've got a full plate there's literally no more room than there is circumference on this plate okay then maybe it's fair for me to drop you know, 
cheerleading. Or maybe it's fair for me to sit down and, and not do as much when it comes to hanging out with this person who hasn't been treating me as well. So powerful visuals. One last one, the hammer. Oh yeah, the hammer. Um, it's just a classic uh, intro sometimes to things like TA or REBT. When you have somebody who has that self-defeating thought process, a lot of times they're hitting themselves with the hammer. You want to have a toy hammer, not a real hammer. Um, <laughs> But if they're hitting themselves with that little toy hammer and you can have them do that, you got to put the hammer down, you know, and I want to teach you how to put the hammer down. You know, what is it? And, and, and that's why we're going to work with your thinking. But it's easier for them. Like you, you, you could sit there and you could say, you got to stop telling yourself irrational things. Or you say to an elementary kid or middle school kid who doesn't get that concept necessarily, you're beating yourself up with the hammer again. We need to put that down. For more information, go to impacttherapy.com or you could purchase the book, Impact Therapy, The Courage to Counsel. Thanks so much.